All right, hello. Uh, welcome to this uh, brief video tutorial from Twin Harbor Web Solutions. I'm gonna, in this uh, tutorial, show you a little bit about how to use slices in Photoshop. Um, right now, I'm working with Photoshop CS2 on the Mac, but this feature's been here, I think, since uh, CS. Um, if not, maybe even version seven. So um, it's been around for a while, and it's available in all the current versions. And uh, slices can make your life a lot easier when it comes to saving out a lot of images, especially for websites. Um, you'll see in this sample I have here, this is just a simple web design I have um, with some links along the top and what I want to do is show you how you can slice up uh, these images and, and use slices to make it very easy to save these things out. Um, so what we're going to do first is, uh, if you haven't already selected it, select the slicing tool which you can pick right here. And you'll see when you pick it, um, I have a number of slices already made, these little boxes that appear on the images. These are already set up so what I'm going to do is just delete one so I'll show you how to make a new one. There's two slice tools, by the way. There's a slice tool and a slice select tool. The slice tool is to make new slices. Slice select tool is to, is to you, as you can see, I can highlight different ones and work with them. So I'll go ahead and delete that one. Hit the delete key on the keyboard there. I'll delete a couple of these so we can start making some new ones. Um, a quick way to shift, to flip between slice and slice select is on your keyboard, hold the shift and hit K. You'll also see if you hold the mouse over, or actually if you click and hold here, these are K. And to flip between them, you hold Shift and hit K on your keyboard. So I can hold Shift K and flip back and forth. Makes, makes it go a lot quicker. So I'll go ahead and select my regular slice tool. And we're going to click and drag right here and put a slice on it. You notice it's snapping to the edge. Snapping also is something sometimes you want to turn it on, sometimes you want to turn it on, sometimes you want to turn it off. To do that, just go to View and check Snap. You can also turn on, you can get granular with it down over here, but snap, turn on and off is nice under the view menu. That helps. Now once you've created it, you can double click on it, and this window pops up right over here, which lets you name it. Now this is going to be the name of your file. So if uh, the item I had over here was called application features, we'll go ahead and eh, we'll just call it app features like this. Now one other thing to note so you're aware is if I put a space in here, when Photoshop saves that out, it's going to put a hyphen in because some web servers don't like spaces in their file names, so it's best practice to not do it. It'll automatically go ahead and put a hyphen in there for you. So we'll say OK. And we'll go ahead and save out this last one right here. Put one in here. That'll be home. I'll double click that. And the screen pops up. We'll hit home here. Click OK. Now once this is done, each and every one of these items is saved as a slice, and I want to save them out to their own images. So now what we can do is from the menu, click File, Save for Web and Devices. On some versions of Photoshop, it just says Save for Web. And you'll see here, I have my sliced view, and for each one of these, you want to set, move over here on the side here on this panel, the, the compression settings. Because depending on what your image looks like, you might want hike, you might want a JPEG, you might want a GIF. The rule of thumb is, if it's a photograph, something with a lot of different colors, JPEG is your best bet, or PNG is, is become more popular now. Uh, PNG 24 anyway. Um, the, uh, so JPEG or PNG 24. If um, you have something with very few colors, like what we have here on this bar, there's really only a handful of colors. It's, it's basically this blue and this gray and the white. Um, GIF format is better because what it does is it creates a table of colors. And once you select GIF, 30, uh, GIF, you're going to select the number of colors. So if I have you know 256 colors, you'll see actually it doesn't even fill out. It only has up to this many colors. So if I do four, you'll see how maybe it's hard to see in the video, but actually I'll go even lower. Let's go to two. If there's only two colors to work with, you'll see I only have the gray and the and the bluish color, greenish color. So you want to have more. So generally what you do is you play around with this until you get something that has as few colors as possible resulting in a fuller, uh, smaller file size. But, uh, you know, the image still looks good. So in this case, something like this, 16 colors is just right. When you go over and see, the image is crisp and clear. You have enough colors to get by. So once you're done with that, you can also, you know, set all the other ones the same way. If you want to set, do, you know, change the settings for multiple images, you can hold the shift key and select multiple and apply settings to multiple images. So then you can go ahead and click save. And it's going to go ahead and let you select a folder. I won't actually do it, but what it'll 
basically hit save and it's going to save each of these out as their own separate image file, whatever it is, .gif, whatever it is, .jpg, using the names that you selected. And that is um, using slices in a nutshell.